What is up with Welsh rugby, honestly? It just seems like every single high for Wales is an unbelievable peak, and every single low is just this huge ravine. My name's Max, welcome back to my channel, and for today's video, I have got my thoughts on the 2024 Six Nations squad. For this one, it is Wales, of course, the juicy is on me, and Wowzers. I thought that Warren Gatlin did a really good job at just giving the team a real nice smooth transition from the old heads, the millennials, to the Gen Zers, the Zoomers, and I really feel for them, eh? Honestly, this squad is not very experienced. There's a huge injury ward, and wowzers. Wales, I just feel it's not quite over for them yet, the hurt. After experiencing a really nice comeback at the World Cup, perhaps they need to dip a little more to get another Six Nations title, I'm not sure. I was almost certainly going to pencil in Dowie Lake as the captain, but he's got injured, Talupi Felletau's injured, Chris Chiyuns is injured, Alex Cuthbert's injured, Jack Morgan, the best open side flanker in the world, is injured, but luckily in a hooker, Ryan Elias and Elliot D, the two experienced heads, they are there to save Wales' bum. Those two are going to be massively instrumental with their experience in the front row, so hopefully Evan Lloyd, who's yet to get a Wikipedia page, can actually get some game time. He looks promising from what I've seen, but with a huge lack of experience and a prop as well, maybe he's not going to get too much time on the pitch because, well, Kieran Asarati's only played two test caps, Kemsley Mathias has only played one, and Archie Griffin, massive man, very promising prospect there, he's uncapped. So Corey Domachowski coming off his first World Cup campaign with six test caps, and Gareth Thomas, the 26 Kiss Cat veteran, well, they are really looking like the senior heads considering Leon Brown that did miss the World Cup and hasn't really played too much recently. It's going to be very interesting as to how the Welsh are going to go on the scrum because, man, that is a real hard time to recover from. No Dylan Lewis, no Thomas Francis. Shocked to see those two not in there, but maybe Gatlin was just holding off a changing of the guard after the World Cup because... Props just such an important position. Over at Locke, the huge talking point though, Daffage Jenkins is going to be the captain at 21 years old. I've always thought the guy looks like a promising prospect, but is handing him the captaincy going to backfire? Maybe or maybe not. Look how Sam Warburton turned out. Look how Gareth Edwards turned out. Look how Jack Morgan himself turned out. Warren Catland is just such a brave man. I have so much respect for him, and hopefully captaincy is just going to bring the best out of J Daffy Jenkins, but thing is, Will Rollins, easily, like easily the second to best Welsh player at the 2023 World Cup behind Jack Morgan, and Adam Beard, 52 test cap legend in British and Irish Lion, which one of those two veterans is going to scrum down in the locking positions alongside Jenkins? I'm not 100% sure. Teddy Williams uncapped, hopefully he's going to have a good time, but I'm a bit confused not to see James Fender in there, so hopefully he'll get a go in the future, but overall, I guess, with Jenkins as the captain, having the two veterans, maybe Gatlin's just not too keen to rest and rotate the locks, given it's a very, very um, inexperienced there, sorry, type 5 fort packets. Also pretty inexperienced in the loose forwards, Aaron Wainwright got him in the graphic, absolute superstar, he's going to be the uh, most capped player in the starting 15 if Elias starts a hooker and if Rollins starts over Beard at lock. Huge responsibility for him being a key decision maker for the team as part of that spine. Tame Basham can be a bit hot and cold, but... I think he's very, very talented. I rate him highly. I think this is going to be good for him. Nice to see James Botham in there for a recall as well. Um, really just wanting to give us all for the Welsh jersey. Tommy Raffel as well. He's got quite a lot better as well. So maybe all those guys are going to do a really good job. Alex Mann and Mackenzie Martin. Not really too huge on them as I was expecting Carwin Tui Pelosi to get a cap, but you know, the duel's not shutting him, it's okay. Hopefully these guys are going to really surprise me and give some absolutely world-class performances when they're called on. The scrum halves, they're also shouldering a lot of responsibility. I'm sure you guys are starting to notice the passion where all of these experienced players, hooker number eight and halfback, 
That is because of the lack of experience at 10, but before we get on to 10, I just want to say it's awesome to see that Gareth Davis isn't retiring yet. The highest try-scoring halfback in Rugby World Cup history, great to see him still going. Kieran Hardy, hopefully he really learns from a bit of an atrocity against South Africa, getting called into the World Cup as injury cover. Hopefully he's going to be a lot calmer, a lot more mature with a cool head on his shoulders this time around. Thomas Williams as well, I'm sure he's going to surpass Gareth Davis in terms of test caps. Already on 53, I believe he's still 29, so it's going to be great to see him get into that scrum and get into that ruck just annoying with his passing off the base, agitating the other nine. I love the way he does that, and I love the way that he just communicates so, so crisply. It's going to be huge for Sam Costello, who was the senior 10, with nine test caps to his name. No Owen Williams, Kai Evans with one test cap, and Yian Lloyd, I think it's how you pronounce his name, he's there with two test caps. Please as well do correct me on some of the Welsh pronunciations down below because I want to get everything right here on this channel. The midfielders though, there seems to be a bit of talk about Mason Grady moving onto the wing and I'm glad they're not going to do that. I think he's a very, very promising 13 and hopefully he's going to remain on the current track that he's on. George North as well, his 121 test caps, including his three for the British and Irish Lions, they are honestly just starting to stick out like a sore thumb so much these days. I mean, there's only four players, sorry, in the squad with 50 test caps or more, and he's got so many more than Davis. It's incredible. Just the longevity on George North after all these injuries, huge credit to him. It's going to be huge for you know, helping Joe Roberts, who had a pretty decent debut against England. This will be really nice for him to just continue learning off George North. Nick Tompkins, one of the best 12s in the world. Great to see him there again. And in a recall for Owen Watkin. I'm stoked to see that. You know, every time I've seen him turn out for Wales, he has performed very well. It was a shame to see him not feature in the World Cup last year. Hopefully he's going to have a pretty nice renaissance wearing jersey number 23. The outside backs, I'm not entirely sure why there's only four, but oh man. I made a video about the Lewis Reese Zammett situation. It's really, really tough on the Welsh. So I'll just cut to the chase and say Josh Adams absolutely has to be the man you are starting in jersey number 15. Rio Dyer and Tom Rogers, they've proven themselves, they're decent, but they're very inexperienced. So the fact that Adams is such defensive prowess, it just makes it a no-brainer, really. Cameron Winnett also looks pretty good. Maybe he could give Josh Adams a run for his money at 15, but maybe Mason Grady is going to cover the wing a tiny little bit if they want a bit more size out there instead of Tom Rogers, who is a bit more of an elusive runner. Overall, what I think is going to happen for the Welsh squad? Um, There's a few nations who I think could either finish second, third, or fourth. It's it's a bit of a tough situation. Wales, I had really high hopes prior to the squad announcement, but now I'm like, I'm feeling a bit of mixed feelings. So I'm not entirely sure what to think of it, but you know, it's great to see Gatlin's continuing his mantra of trusting this next generation. They have four years to build until the World Cup, and Gatlin just wants to make full advantage of this. There's injuries right now, he's trusting the next generation. We will see in 2027 whether this pays off, and hopefully it does. Cheers for watching the video as well, guys. Um, do remember to comment your thoughts at the end of this, and uh, like it, and subscribe to me if you enjoyed today's video. Do remember as well to watch my Lewis Reese Emmett video, because that is... Probably the biggest talking point off this Welsh squad. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers from Max.